BBC Two. The Atlantic can be a dangerous place. Usually, only the most experienced mariner will take it on. Occasionally, the odd actor might have a go as well. If this gets considerably bigger, we're going back. I'm Timothy Spall, and I've just skippered around Land's End in a barge. With my first mate and wife, Shane, we're making our way around the British coast, one port at a time. The roughest sea we've ever been on, the waves were about eight foot high, and the front of the boat was going smash, and the waves were coming right over the front of the boat and hitting the roof. And that was on the Thames. We're now in St Ives, and in this last stretch before winter, I'm going to get us to Wales. That's 150 miles away. And our barge does seven miles an hour on a good day. It really is you, your boat, and the sea. A to B by C definitely end in a catastrophe if you don't get it right. Somewhere at sea, a liner is somewhere at sea. Bring in to me a traveler who my life on you. But there's nothing better, I'm telling you, than discovering your own country by sea. Somewhere at sea. Dawn is breaking over St Ives, and the fishermen are up early to catch their mackerel. They still line fish here, as they have done for centuries. These small boats will be back later, each carrying a ton of mackerel. We won't be around to see them. We've got to be out of here in the next hour. If we leave any later, it won't be a harbour, it will be a beach. This green signifies that when the tide goes away, the sea becomes land. The stretch of sea from North Cornwall to the Bristol Channel has some of the most extreme tides in Britain. A skilled mariner will get the tide behind him. All the skilled mariners around here are out fishing. Well, if we get that knot, if we get that tide behind us like we did last night, yesterday, I wonder if we'll be going that way or that way, or that way, I should check it, really. I still don't know if I'm getting this right or not, no one's ever shown me how to do it. I calculate I've got a few hours to wait if we're going to catch the next tide. But as I don't want to get beached in St Ives, I'm trying an old sailor's trick. It's nothing complicated. Just move to deep water, switch off the engine and drop anchor. No. No? No. The anchor's not working. The electric anchor's not working, so Tim's going to do it manually. <coughs> Good sake, Knuckle, so I'm giving it a whack. The anchor is broken. The boat by now is drifting, and there are rocks to the right and rocks to the left. Our only option is to press on against the tide. I don't know. A different story every day. I don't know. We're heading up the coast to Padstow. The strong tides and the Atlantic swell make this the best place in Europe for surfing. Surfing means big waves that crash in. Now, that's not very good for a barge. Oh, my goodness. 
if you're going to go across surfing waves, it means it's going to be quite rough. Actually, I'm not supposed to say that, they'll be annoyed. It's taken us all day just to do 30 miles. But finally, we're greeted by the Camel Estuary, the gateway to Padstow. But either side of us, two of the most stunning beaches I've ever seen. But beneath the water here is a famous sandbank, the Doom Bar, which you can see in all its glory at low tide. So it's so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. You wouldn't think it was September. Once an industrial region of shipbuilding and mining, it's now protected as an area of outstanding natural beauty. Such a delight to arrive in a place you've never been before in your life by a boat, once again. I'm not going to get smug, we probably end up on a bloody sandbank. It may be stunning, but the tide here can create problems because of the speed that it comes in. And right now, the Camel River has got the ump. 6.8 we're doing here, so the tide's banging in here. The tide's doing four knots. Yeah, I know, I saw it. It's pulling us along too quickly, and I don't like it. You stay there and I'll do this, all yeah, right? Yeah, I know what I'm doing, love. I'm, what, I'm trying to get into position. Oh, right, OK. You've sunk the boy. Huh? You've sunk the boy. You'd have to tell the harbour master. It's not just the boy we've got to worry about. The dinghy that was attached to it is doing a runner. Are you sure it's loose? I don't know. Anymore. Right, I'll come back and around. No, it's still Just attached. be careful. It's attached. Let me have a look if that's in the water or not. No, but you, the, the, you've sunk the boy. I hit it and snapped it off the boy. The tide got the better of me. Our dramatic entrance hasn't gone unnoticed. Hello. Hiya. Oh. This skipper knows the owner of the dinghy. He doesn't seem that impressed. I'm very sorry about that. The tide got the better of me. <laughs> Shane's not impressed either. It's the biggest boy I've ever seen in my life, and he missed it. I love your loyalty, Shane. You, you, you know, you blame me when something. But you should have seen it to me. It was a bloody big yellow thing. Well, I did it, but there's a point of shouting at me about it for. First an anchor, and now a boy. It can't get any worse, can it? It's very shallow here, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I'm pulling back. Oh, blimey. I think we've run aground. Yeah. Hi, Padstow Harbour. This is Princess Matilda. Yeah, we've just arrived, and uh, we've run into a bit of trouble. The tide got us into this trouble, and only the tide can get us out of it. Oh, it's all right. It's, huh? com it's coming in really quickly, so... I don't like we're moving. Hang on a minute. It's not getting smart. So hard, but this is Princess Matilda. You have to make your way in now. As soon as you go through the gate, if you go to the starboard. Right by um, where all the tourists sit, and uh, that'd be nice. Padstow gets over a million visitors a year. They come here for the glorious beaches and the delightful village. But today, the main attraction is two idiots in a barge. Bloody hell. That was a palaver, wasn't it? Why is there always an audience? This is called keeping a low profile. <laughs> I've been on the tourist trail. What a journey that was. That's 20, it's five to five. We didn't push it, but that's... 
That's nine hours. <laughs> nine hours. We came round Land's End, which it was three miles less in four. Jesus. And we've had a Barney, and we've wrecked a boat. Chin chin. Do you still love me? I might do. <laughs> of course I do. One relationship fixed, one barge broken. We can't go anywhere until we fix our anchor. Still, there are worse places to be stuck. Padstow is named after St Petrock, a Christian missionary who came here by accident. Like us, his boat was caught in the tide of the Camel River and came to rest here. Wonder if he hit a sandbank. Chilly, not bad for September. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Beautiful. St Petrock came from Wales. If we had to get there before winter, We'd have to pray that Matilda gets fixed soon. It's probably a very simple thing. It's probably a fuse or, you know, just something that a, a mechanic's going to look at and go, here you go, mate. I do feel such a fool, though, because I just don't know mechanically how it, how it functions, and I should, really. I really should, because it's probably a very simple thing. It took four days for someone to come and fix the anchor and another day to go a whopping 60 miles to Ilfracombe in Devon. Ilfracombe is built on a series of cliffs. The most famous, Hillsborough Hill, is known locally as the Sleeping Elephant. He protects the small harbour from the storms of the Bristol Channel. But as he can't stop the tide, we are not sticking around. Soon the harbour will be dry, so I'm going to try the old sailor's trick again. So they don't have... Ah. Oh, Timmy! I enjoyed that. Sake. This is our first chance to test how well Matilda's been fixed. Why is it every morning on this boat seems like three days? Is it working? Tim? Have you got it? I think so. You think so? I think so, yeah. We're holding. Oh, hallelujah. For the time being. The great thing about making mistakes or anything going wrong is that's the only way I learn. The man who fixed our anchor said there was something missing from the end of the anchor chain. A short bit of rope called the bitter end. Uh, say, for instance, you're in a boat and you, your anchor gets caught and you can't move and the storm's, a storm's coming, you need to get in. If you don't want to lose it, it's held on by a rope, but if you do want to lose it, you just cut the bitter end. Hence, to the bitter end. When he, when he gave me the rope and the chain, he measured it like this. Do you know what that is? A man's arm's length? A fathom. I couldn't fathom what he was doing. <laughs> We're in touching distance of Wales. But Penarth, our final destination, is just out of reach. So we're heading 30 miles along the coast to a port in Somerset called Watch It. Watch it. Never tire of saying it, do you? Watch it. I've heard that Watchet Harbour is notoriously difficult to get into. The tides can pull you onto rocks just outside its entrance. Get through that, and there's another, even smaller gate into the marina. It's literally about 20 foot wide, now our boat's 15 foot wide, so that's, we've got to get in that little hole. I mean, we might be missing the opportunity if we don't get going, um, but I haven't done the calculations and I'm not going to rush. I've got to work out when the tide will turn before I leave. If I get it right, we'll be there in six hours, 
just before sunset. Tide is a science. I hated science at school. Got about another 45 minutes. And at the moment, this is telling us we're going to arrive at 10 o'clock. <laughs> I bloody hope not. Because we've been in England all this time, Wales is almost like a tantalising, um, you know, it's almost like we have to reach it, but we, we're, we're not doing it. We're, um, we're staying in England for no other reason than practicality. Can you give me a kiss, sir? No, you give me a kiss. Can you give me a kiss? I'm concentrating. I'm just kissing my little finger. I'm not a natural leader or a natural skipper. The sense of responsibility is enormous, but like anything that is um, possibly life-threatening, fear tends to go, turn into adrenaline and concentration. Oh my God, look at that. How beautiful is that? The sunset on your right. Trying to get into a harbour that you know is difficult and not even getting there yet. And then the glory that is Barry Island and Wales behind you. I'm going to make a cock up, I know. No, you won't. No, you won't. The sun is sinking fast. And if we hit the rocks by the harbour wall, we'll be sinking with it. This is the first time I've ever entered a seaport in the dark. Congratulating myself until we're in the no. harbour, yeah. We can't go through the small gate into the marina. Uh, watch your harbour master, watch your harbour master. There's a Princess Matilda over. The lights are on, but no one's home. They've gone out. We're just gonna have to keep spinning around in I'm trembling. I need gin. <laughs> This is confusing. I can't even see if the gate is open. You know, it, could, it actually could be automated, couldn't it? I think it is. Bloody light's so green, I can't bloody see the hole. Why has it gone red again? Something coming out? You can't go in when the lights are... Ah, oh, there we go. Now, this is going to be the hard part, because I've got no idea whether this boat's going to fit in that hole. Ah. <laughs> we'll allow one of those, we'll allow one of those every now and again. I've done it, we're here. We're in Watch It Harbour. Talk about Watch It. Watch it! God, this is one of the hardest ports I've ever, ever had to get in my life. It's tiny, isn't it? We're both shattered after yet another full day at sea. God. But we've arrived in one piece. Well, at least I hope we have. Where's that big torch? The marks of nautical war. There's a little bit of a dent in it, but Matilda's very forgiving. Watchit Harbour used to be a major port for freight liners, exporting locally made paper and importing European wine. 
Seems like a fair swap. Nowadays, the main trade is pleasure boats. Watch it as the biggest repair yard in Somerset. This old crane is pivotal to the entire business. And the driver is keen to show it to us. Well, I think I know someone who might. He's just come out of the shaft. You can have a go. Where is it? <laughs> I wonder if he'd let me play with his crane if he knew what I'd done to his harbour wall. It's very agile, my husband. I'm quite agile for a fat girl. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the seat, love. Oh, I'm out the way. <laughs> 40 years old? Yeah. Older than you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a bit worried he's going to put his foot on the wrong pedal here. No, it's no problem there. You've got to look relaxed. <laughs> Right, put on that pedal there, look. With a top speed of three miles an hour, this is even slower than Matilda. And he's not even looking where he's going. He doesn't have to at that speed. We may well bring Matilda back here over the winter to get some repairs, but it's safe to say I won't be driving the crane. Oh, look at that. Just... <laughs> I love it. Playing by wires. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I know it is. You are. You're like a yeah. octopus come drummer. I bet you'd be, I'd be all right. You could pick up the drums in about five minutes. As <laughs> soon as I retire from the acting profession, I'm yeah, up here. He's coming back. When, 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 when do I start? <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I like this because you, once you're up here, you get a real sense of what it was, isn't it? Oh, this yeah, is a proper true. hard era, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Donkey show. Is this an ancient ball then? Oh, well? yeah. yeah. It's been yeah. like. Thousand years. Yeah. Thousand years. Yeah. Oh, they used to have their own mint here and jails and stuff like that. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? This is a stunning coastline. Samuel Taylor Coleridge came to watch it in 1797. He wrote the rhyme of the ancient mariner here. In the story, the ancient mariner ends up with an albatross around his neck which is exactly how I feel about the Bristol Channel. But our final destination is in our sights. So that's Panarf there. He's over the... He said head straight out to that. But I've actually charted a course to go... around there and up there. Look at these rocks here. You get, stick, get stuck on those, for God's sake. If you did come up here on high tide and got stuck up here, You'd probably have to wait another three months before you go off again. nine days, Matilda has done 150 nautical miles. Sometimes we don't even manage that in a year. Lately, we've really put her through her paces. There's a paint where you hit it. That's where I hit. <laughs> this is her final journey of the year to Penarth in Wales. We want to make this a celebration. Try and relax a bit now. We're joined by an old friend, Miriam, and Shane is giving Matilda a makeover. Yeah, Matilda's dressed up. Shane says she wants bunting. They're going to have bunting because I might be the skipper and the admiral, but she's the purser and the ship's figurehead. She's the ship's uh, magician. She look pretty. See, I think Matilda's got a, a heart. That's what I think. The way she got... I mean, Tim was amazing getting into that harbour the other night, but this boat was extraordinary, wasn't it? She was just, like, really solid, really solid and safe. And she likes it. So she's got a present. 
And the thing about boating is that because it's slow, it makes your country feel as big as it actually is. You know, speed, cars, airlines have shrunk the world. We've grown to believe it's small. It's not, it's still big. Hello. Is this Wales? Are we in Wales? <laughs> All that stands between us and the end of this adventure is the Cardiff Bay Barrage. A huge seawall and a set of locks built 10 years ago at a cost of 220 million pounds. Better make sure I don't bump these harbour walls. Right. Yes! <laughs> we're, we're here, we've done it. We've done it. Oh, I feel like Mr and Mrs, I'll tell you who we are. We're Mr and Mrs Vasco de Gama, Magellan, Francis Drake, uh, Columbus, that's who we are. Just about the same Foggy little fella Drowsy little dame Two sleepy people By dawn's early light And too much in love To say goodnight One, two, three Come on We've done it, we've arrived in Another country Our journey's over, for this year at least. We'll have all winter to explore this old seaside town while Matilda hibernates. You know, I mean, I absolutely love, we've always loved seaside towns in the winter though. I mean, there's nobody here, and there's a, there's a melancholy and a beauty. But it's so unbelievably quintessentially Britain, isn't it? Come next spring, we'll be off again. How far? Who knows? Like this pier, our journey's a bit rough round the edges. We're just taking it one port at a time. That, on the right, if I'm right in thinking, is the Gower Peninsula. And we've got to go down there, straight down there and turn right. And I think I'm right, I think that is the Gower Peninsula. Yeah, that is definitely the Gower Peninsula, I think, unless I'm getting it wrong, and that's um, Devon. Trouble with the sea, play tricks on your eyes. Especially if you don't know what you're talking about. Next, we're getting our hands dirty, digging for Britain in the Tudor age. A traveller who will build my life anew. He's out on the sea, somewhere at sea. And don't be surprised if you...